Mark, uh, I follow you on Instagram and I encourage everyone to follow you. And you mentioned that in one of your posts, four ways how to network. Can you tell us about those four ways, especially for introverts, for job seekers who are like, I'm not used to going and talking or listening to others. What can I do? What can they do? Yeah. So yeah, that was a great post. Um, so yeah, so the post was how to network for, for introverts. And, you know, as someone who's really struggled with social anxiety, being shy, this is obviously a major part of my life. You know, I actually, I remember, I have memories of me going to uh, events like early on uh, in my career while I was kind of trying to tackle my social anxiety. And I remember there were some times where I would be so nervous. I would be so anxious to talk to people. I would literally go to the bathroom and just hide there for the entire event because I couldn't get myself to talk to people. And so what I found out was this. So number one is a lot of uh, people with social anxiety, uh, a lot of them actually struggle. This is just according to the research. A lot of them struggle with uh, substance abuse. Mm -hmm. A lot of them struggle with things like drugs, alcohol, uh, anything that you can really abuse, which we talked about before, food. And so a lot of people who have social anxiety that have to go to an event, a lot of them, what they'll do is, you know, they might, they might vape something before they walk into the event. You know, they walk into the event, the first spot they go to is the bar and get some kind of alcoholic drink. Uh, they might go to the, the food, the buffet table and go to the dessert table and eat, um, you know, sugary treats and whatnot. And the reality of the fact is, is, what I've learned is, you know, you're trying to do that to shift your state of mind, even if you're just eating sugary foods. Mm -hmm. What happens is when you give power to something outside of your mind, mm -hmm. whether it's something that's bad for you, like drugs, or even something that's potentially good for you, you are losing your own mind's ability to do that on its own. Yeah. And so what I would do is I would, you know, uh, you know, kind of do this too. And I would think that this was a solution, a fix to my problem, when in reality, it's just like slapping on a Band-Aid. Yeah. You know, you've just sort of fixed the problem for 30 minutes or an hour, but you're not actually getting to the root problem. And thinking you fixed the problem when you haven't actually fixed the problem makes the problem worse because you're not getting to the root cause. Yeah. And so number one, do not rely on Band-Aid fixes. Do not uh, try to artificially change your state of mind before you go to an event. If you really have to change your state of mind before you go to an event, what I recommend is I recommend running. Uh, I mean, you know, it's been shown in studies that, you know, running um, fires your endorphins and endorphins are actually the same receptors in our brain mm -hmm. that uh, opiates and morphine and painkillers run off of. And so if you can reduce your perception of pain and then you go to an event and you have to talk to people, it's not going to be that painful. And so if you have to do something, that's what I would recommend. Um, number two is I would say to look around the event, look around the room and see if there are other introverts. See if there's anyone who's sitting alone. See if there's anyone standing by themselves in the corner. Because a lot of the times it might be easier for you to walk up to somebody like that that is doing the same thing that you're doing and just one-on-one -on -one introduce yourself because you know that they're going to be introverted and they're going to be calm. And if you do that and you do that again and again and again, I don't know about you, but whenever I go to events, there's always people like this. There's always people that are in like the corner of the room or like they're sitting by themselves. If you go up to them and sit next to them and just introduce yourself, I guarantee you they're going to be very, very friendly people. And if you do that enough times, maybe you could start introducing different introverts together and maybe even form like a group conversation. I do, I still do this all the time when I go to events. Yeah. Um, That's nice. You know, yeah. And you know, probably another thing would be to, um, you know, be more. Um, so I know, but I know like previously, I know a lot of people who struggle with being shy and introverted. I know a lot of them will overthink and they'll overthink like, what do I say? What do I do in social situations? And they'll, you know, run so many scenarios in their head of like, you know, if somebody walks up to me and asks me this question, how am I going to respond? Or what do I say if this thing happens and this, this and that? 
the matter of the fact is, is um, don't do that. And what I would be more focused on is don't even focus on yourself, focus on other people. So what I would do is I would, you know, if I'm in a conversation, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even think about myself. I would just be so interested in asking the other person questions. I would be not necessarily want to be interesting. I would rather be interested in the other person. And then last but not least, this I think goes with everything in life. I think it's important to set an intention for the Mm -hmm. event. So I do this when I get invited to a speaker at every single event, because if I don't, my mind will lose focus and it'll get anxious. And so for me, I'll write down, you know, for example, um, you know, like a mutual person I know we know, uh, last year in May yeah. in New York city, I spoke at an event next to Claude Silver. Yes. And before that an event, I wrote down and I set an intention and I was like, Claude is such an awesome person. I want so many people to meet here. So my intention is to introduce Claude to other people who are worth knowing. Mm -hmm. And so when I set that as an intention, whenever my brain gets unfocused or it's like, oh, you're anxious, it goes back to that intention. And so, you know, those are just four principles. And in my book that comes out, Screw Being Shy, there's a lot more. Um, But those are like good fundamentals that someone can start with. Yeah, those are great tips. And my intention is whenever I go to any event, at least meet three new people and ask them what's their intention or what, they, what do they want to get from this meeting? Is it just social, networking, meeting or the topic, what they brought in? And that's helping me, you know, network or, and ask about them, as you mentioned, one of the tips. And again, thank you for sharing those tips, Mark. And for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of networking, please leave it in the comment section. Like and share the video, subscribe to the channel and tune in tomorrow for another question with Mark.